Mass contributions, thanksgiving to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on the 14th wedding anniversary of Chaitanya and Shaiju by Lishan. Mass intentions, thanksgiving mass to the most sacred heart of Jesus by Suarez family for the Lord's mercy, protection, and blessings on the whole world by Shiny Anthony for all the faithful departed, all the souls in purgatory, and all the forgotten souls by Shiny Anthony, for the soul of Xavier M. by Senu Mary and family, for the departed soul of Suresh Venkatesh by Jesse Sabu, for all the souls in purgatory by Sabu Supriyan and family. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus every day when we participate in the Eucharist we have to remind ourselves that we are one day closer to the Lord that we are one day closer to the eternity, that God has blessed all of us with life here on this earth and with all the bountiful blessings that we enjoy, what we need to see is how we can make it to eternity, how we can secure a place with God in heaven. A time and again, we fail to understand this because either by the world's attractions and distractions, we tend to lose ourselves. Let us acknowledge our sins as we enter into this celebration, asking God the pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. But on some points I have written to you very boldly. By way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. To bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deeds, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Lyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told to him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response will be 
The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nation. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. Your response? The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation as shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. Your response? The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. Your response? The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. Gospel acclamation. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this? that I hear about you, turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I am sure most of us, we are very familiar with this phrase, with this saying, money is the root cause of all evil. Money is the root cause of all evil. The phrase or the saying has not just come like that. It has been spoken out of experience and wisdom. That is, 
when we see in the world that good number of us that we want to earn money, we want to save, we want to spend, but most of the time we are poor managers. And many a time we tend to think that when we have money, we think that we have everything. But what is the most ultimate and important thing that we need to secure for our lives, especially as believers? When there are people, when they have money, they just recklessly spend it. And when they don't have money, they go about fretting and worrying that they don't have money. So, in earning money, spending and saving, there's a whole lot of uh, theories, investopedia that can tell us. So, when we see that Jesus, during his lifetime, there was a considerable amount of a time or content that Jesus concentrates upon the wealth of this world and how to manage the riches and how one has to make sure that these riches are to be used for one's needs and not to be hoarded, not to be stored so that they may lose their souls. You know, there are a couple of uh, parables, you know, the rich fool, the rich man and the poor Lazarus. And now Jesus is speaking about the dishonest manager. You know, we must um, uh, try and ask, what does Jesus know about management? You know, we have there are so many successful motivational thinkers today, the businessmen who give a lot of theories about management. But Jesus, 2000 years ago, the Divine Master, He is giving a completely different approach towards management of what we have and what we are entrusted with and how this management is so important, not just for the earthly lifetime, but for the ultimate future. That is for eternity. What we see in uh, today's uh, gospel, that the owner is praising the manager for his shrewdness. And well, towards the end of the gospel we see, he is called as the dishonest manager. So he is being praised for his shrewdness. But what is the whole point of Jesus telling this parable about this shrewd manager. He had a different point altogether. We just don't see towards the end of the gospel what happened to this manager, whether he was fired later on, whether did he really find a, um, comfortable life with all those people whom he made uh, adjustments with. We just don't know. But what is Jesus' implication or the point in telling this parable? What we see in the gospel is the dishonest manager, he was worried and he wanted to immediately secure his future. The immediate future. What will happen to me tomorrow? And in order to secure that immediate future, he just follows the dishonest ways and means. But what is Jesus telling here is the ultimate future. Most of us today on this earth, that we are more worried about the immediate future. You know, we want to plan our children's education. We want to plan our retirement. We want to have a comfortable life. We want to provide for all our needs. The immediate future. 
what jesus is trying to say whatever that you earn all the money all the wealth that you can earn you can enjoy it only in the matter of 70 years or 80 years the psalmist very beautifully he says what is our life span it is 70 years or 80 for those who are strong so that's all is only matter of 80 or 100 whatever that is god has portioned out for us but what jesus is impl- implying here is what will we do for the ultimate future are you not worried about the billion years are you not worried about the eternity so if that is the case if you are the children of light that's the comment that towards the end jesus makes you know for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light unbelievers and believers so as believers can we be also following these ways and means and be worried only about the immediate future another beautiful point that we need to see from today's gospel is what is it that the dishonest manager is trying to rely on he is trying to rely on a wealth or money that is going to perish that is going to fall away for jesus said do not store up treasures here on earth where there is uh, where there is theft where there is moth and it will be destroyed but store up treasures in heaven what do you gain if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul so jesus was very clear in distinguishing that the children of light the believers should be much different and that's how we see in today's first reading beautifully how saint paul is more concerned about the gentiles it is not that he wanted to go and proclaim the gospel the, uh, the about jesus to those who had already heard it is one of the unbroken rules that what we see in the life of saint paul that he would never go to a place where christ's gospel was already preached and that's how he is known as the apostle of the gentiles so that the unbelievers so that those who are still in darkness those who are still only worried about their immediate future those who are trying to uh, build their lives upon a foundation that is going to fall away so this is why saint paul was more worried to take the gospel to the gentiles so that they can learn about jesus and so that they can also find salvation and what we see is saint paul very vehemently he goes about proclaiming the name of jesus to all those people who were not saved and in doing this he knew very well that what was his position where he stood that's how in uh, in a place he says who is paul who is apollos you know paul planted apollos watered god gave the growth god gave the growth my dear friends as believers in our lives all that is entrusted to us it is god's blessing god is the man the owner and we are just the managers the time the talent the treasure that god has given to us how are we managing it if only we can rightfully we can use the time talent and the treasure surely we will be able to look towards uh, an ultimate future our own eternity so that we can secure a place with god and that's what is required as i said money is the root cause of all evil it is not just my saying it is the saying of many it is the experience of many and i'm sure we all know what happens all around money it is as i said the root cause of all evil many a time many people not just lose their souls 
even lose their lives going after money and wealth and finally only misery and suffering comes in. We have seen there are so many families, so many relationships that are broken, destroyed just because of money, just because of wealth. Is this what as believers we need to do? We need to be worried about our immediate future, yes. But with that, it should not be over. Have we secured our ultimate future? Amen. This our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord make a sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. church. May the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Heavenly Father in the words our Saviour taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us safe. Mission Month Prayer Father of all goodness, mercy and love, we thank you for having chosen us to be your witnesses in today's world. Guide us to utilize all the given opportunities to share your good news with others by our word and action. Give us the spirit of generosity to support the missionary activities through our prayers and generous contributions. Bless and protect all those who are in, invoked in spreading your salv salvific message. We pray that you send more members to work in your vineyard. Illumine our minds and hearts to recognize your spirit in every human being and reach out your love and mercy to them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. When Ezra you was still a babe, I love to have him pure. And from afar I call to my child. The more I begged him to come, the more he turned away. He did not. Into your hands we come. Abba, into your heart we love. Abba, we are returning home. We want to live the love that you call your own. We want to live. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life within the Savior having achieved.